question three we are told that you are interested in the relationship between the number of people in a sales team and the sales generated for a certain industry. The data below shows gross sales measured in millions of dollars and the number of people on a sales team and then we have the pairs of data for our sample. Part A asks us to calculate the covariance and the co coefficient of correlation and then in part B we have to look at what conclusions can be reached um, about the relationship between the number of people in a sales team and the sales generated. Now we've got the data in our Excel file and so here we're going to use Excel and basically let it do all the number crunching for us. So if we start with covariance, uh, there's a formula for covariance in Excel. We have to again start with the equals and then the keyword we're looking for is just covar. Now when we open up the brackets, uh, Excel will remind us that it's looking for two data arrays and that's because we have the bivariate data here. We have the XY pairs and so we need to put each of those um, pairs, each of those series into uh, the brackets. Now for this it actually doesn't matter which way around you go, you will still get the same answer. But do keep in mind that when we get to topic four and we look at regression it will be really important which way around the X X's and the Y's go. So I'm going to put in the X's, I can just block those on, comma, and then the Y's. Okay, and that gives us a covariance, I'll just type in a label of 44.9. Now remember with covariance, it tells us the direction of the relationship, so whether it's positive or negative, but it doesn't actually tell us the strength. So since we have a positive value for covariance, we can say that we have a positive relationship between the number of staff and the sales generated. But we can't actually say how strong that relationship is as yet. So we can do correlation, and I'll just type in a heading and put that just below. Now our formula is going to be Corel, so C-O-R-R-E-L, that's our uh, correlation function, open brackets, and again Excel wants the two arrays, and again it doesn't matter which way around we put them for this calculation. But, as I said, keep in mind when we get to topic four and we do regression in Excel, it will matter which order uh, the data sets go in. So I'll do the X's and then the Y's, hit enter and it calculates the correlation. I'll just round that off to two decimal places. It's 0.82 and so that in fact tells us once again that it's positive, it's a positive value, but the 0.82 tells us that this is in fact a strong relationship and so on the basis of that we can certainly conclude that there is a relatively strong positive linear relationship between the number of staff and sales. Now just as a little extra it's nice to visualize and in fact really if we're doing these types of calculations we should have always started with a scatter plot first. We weren't asked to do that specifically in this question but I'm just going to block on the data, go to insert, scatter and I'll put that in. Now I won't worry about formatting because this is really just to demonstrate. You can definitely see the positive trend that we've got there between uh, the number of staff and sales. So we've got number of staff on the X, sales on the Y. And if I right click on any one of those points and say add trend line and say close. Now this is actually something from topic four but just getting ahead. If we put that trend line on, so that sort of imaginary line that we imagine to summarize the, the data, we can see that yes, it's a positive relationship and the points are fairly close to that trend line, indicating that it is a strong relationship between those two variables.